Uh, hi, I'm Lee Barge. Hello, this is Guti. Hello, guys. We are the Never Dogs. Salut, sunt Mahoni. Ce faci? I am Marcus Schultz. Salut, sunt Pagal. Hi, guys. I'm Leon. And I'm Joe Daniel. Hi, this is John Digweed. You're watching In Session on UTV. E o ediție specială de In Session. Bun găsit, sunt Marius Sonug. Mă bucur să mă aflu în seara asta în clubul în care se dau cele mai tari petreceri de underground din ultimii 15 ani. Exact, Crystal Club împlinește azi 15 ani. Și cum am putea sărbători altfel decât prin muzică bună? Avem un super artist în seara asta în pupitru. Pot să spun despre el că este fondatorul labelului All Day I Dream, este din UK și da, este Lee Burridge, invitatul nostru la In Session în seara asta pe UTV. So, thanks for finding some time to chat with us. Um, first, I saw on your Facebook page that situation, someone stole your USB stick. Did you find it? Don't mention that. <laughs> we actually just had a, dis a discussion about whether we could talk about it. No, it didn't turn up. Sadly not. So Bad news. Um, potentially bad news, because there's a lot of uh, music from my labels that are coming in you know, the next year. So it's bad for the artists, you know, because some people when they share it it goes up on sites and the DJs and people that don't want to buy music take it from the site and it really affects the artists I mean for me if we lose some money on the label it's okay I'll survive but I'm more concerned for my artists tonight is crystal 15th anniversary uh, Yeah, where were you 15 years ago? I don't know where I was 15 minutes ago. <laughs> uh, 15 years ago, which would be what? 2003? 2003, right. Um, yeah, I was probably here, actually. Uh, at at uh, Crystal's first, first birthday. <laughs> so I actually helped deliver Crystal on its birth. Yeah, and tell me, how did you uh, change in this 15 years? I used to have an afro, like a really big hair, like a lot of hair. Um, I haven't really changed, I've just continued to uh, explore and sort of believe in what I found to be the music that I love, uh, you know, within, if we're just talking about DJing. Um, and I think that's an important thing, you know, just to pursue your dreams and to keep looking. Uh, but I moved away from some people when I met other ones. So. What's the main ingredient for a long time career? Not dying. <laughs> What drives you after all these years? Doing it for the same reason, which is, you know, I love music. It, it's passion. You have to put that in front of everything. The, you know, the, the, the whole idea of being a DJ now, some people get into it because they want to be rich or famous or somebody to pay attention. It's not about that, you know, it's about believing in something and sharing it with somebody else and hopefully you know getting more and more people around that idea so you know staying true to your values but how hard it is uh, to remain a high level dj because there are big names on this market and you're special in your way i think you you just need to like not worry about that i mean i've I, i've been on a roller coaster so The best example was when Minimal came forward. It was not my world at all, and, and not really anything that I could have jumped onto that bandwagon and pretended that's what I did. But then you're not being authentic. So you're not that type that uh, goes with the wind. No, no, and, and then my career went down. You know, it didn't go away, but it was definitely a time when I started. Oh my God, I don't have as many gigs. But not the, uh, the whole world doesn't change to one sound. So there's always places you can go, and you just gotta, you know carry on looking and finding what represents you and, and that that works for me and luckily in again in the last eight years it's risen again because I found something that other people resonated with and came towards think about making a movie or a documentary about your whole career, your ups and downs? Strangely enough, actually a friend of mine and, and also a DJ on All Day I Dream, Hoj, his other passion and his other skill set is he makes um, a lot of 
um, visual content. So we actually did a lot of footage to think about doing <clears throat> some sort of documentary. But I, we discovered after doing everything that it needs uh, a thread and it needs certain elements. And it's, it's nice, but I feel like it might be a little boring to be a documentary. You know, it's, it'd be a fun, short 15-minute film uh, to sum up, you know, what, what had happened at that point. But, you know, since All Day a Dream was born, now that the idea's got bigger than just me, it's actually about a world that's been created and other artists. So I think we're going to go back and use certain parts of it and then also bring on board the other artists and create more of an interesting story. Behind it was basically to represent and play an evening or an afternoon of melodic music. So telling a story through music because certain sounds and, and, and I love these sounds don't, I'm not comparing saying they're bad or anything techno is about energy and about this reaction but it wasn't really about emotion or that kind of response it's about going out and having an amazing dance and you walk away from it and you had a good time and then next week you do the same thing um, whereas this was really about evoking emotion through music and having people walk away with something in their head that stays there for three days and you can't get this song out of your head or this melody or a lyric or something. And it's part of what I experienced in the 90s with music. I would hear something and it's so special and it marks, it's like a time machine. I listen to that record now from 1992 and it takes me right back to all the experiences I had with that record. But, you know, something more emo emotive was missing, I, I felt, in the musical spectrum around the, the late, around 2007, 2008. So I thought, okay, start something. And also, I, I'm getting older, so a lot of people that have been fans of mine along the way also got older, and they can't go to a nightclub every weekend. But you don't stop liking music. So I started doing I, I played it in the daytime, and... People come, you know, and they have kids or a job, they can still do that and they go home at 10 or 11 at night and they feel fine, you know, and, and so it was about also providing a place for people that had got older but still wanted to be a community and go out to music. Do you enjoy doing this label stuff? Luckily, I have a team, actually. I mean, I have one person running my label, uh, but we work together. Uh, I mean, I do all the A&R. Um, I have a management team of four people that run the events, and we have a staff of people that run the events as well. So I don't know, maybe 10 or 12 people working on, on, on the project. Luckily, otherwise it would be a mess if it was just me. Let's talk about this A&R stuff. Um, do you get new talents? With the events? you could take two routes. You can do the established thing, which everybody does, which is I book Seth Troxler and Nina Kravitz, and you know, you book all the names, Solomon, whatever. Um, or you develop new talent, and that's what I was more interested in, seeking out, finding, supporting, and helping to nurture young, talented people, because it's, it's a crazy world, and you don't go to school to learn how to be a DJ or be in the music industry, not really. So, people get used or it just doesn't it's not easy it, no I've been a DJ a long time so 35 years being a DJ 30 years within dance music so I've learned a lot from my own mistakes and other people's actions and I want to be able to expedite and help people get there faster you know because there are so many talented people How important is online? I actually love, I, I, I feel like I'm one part of a bigger thing and DJs, you know, we get treated in this specific way and I learned a long time ago that people will treat me differently but I don't have to act differently, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a still normal person, I, I do a job that I love, you know, I feel very fortunate. And it's, but do you have time yeah, for this? Yeah, of course, I mean, people just, sometimes they want to say, thank you or they ask a question you know and why why keep it a secret you know you if I don't tell somebody what a track is I'm not helping the artist who made the track I'm, I'm being you know like selfish so you know yeah I, I think it's really important to connect with people and if people come to support 
by dancing, why wouldn't you yeah. say, oh, thanks, yeah, I had a great, I had a great time in your like country or nightclub too? Uh, what happens when you decide to sit down and in the studio and uh, produce a track? It, it, it's different on different days, but I have to lean heavily on the people I work with. I never really came from a production background. Um, and I think to truly get to the place where I am now when I work with people, it's a really long, <clears throat> long road and it would take um, years for me to maybe get to that place. So I work and have worked with very talented people and I try to sort of um, be some sort of like inspiration with, you know, I mean, I used to go in with three tracks and say, let's make something like this and this and this. But then you just end up with a track that sounds like three tracks and it's not so original. So I found the right people to work with. And I, if they're the cupcake, I'm the sprinkles on the top, maybe. Or, you know, little details, ideas. But you get there together. And, and sometimes it's about the chemistry you have with that person that creates the music that comes out the other end. What's your opinion about ghost producing? The artists that use ghost producers, producers should say that they're using ghost producer, producers okay. and actually help that producer. I mean, Lost Desert was a ghost producer really? for so many different artists and he wasn't getting anywhere himself. And, and I just said, why not? And he said, I, I, I don't really know. So, you know, I, I opened the door and we're still walking down that path together. So you perform at the biggest festivals in the world. How can an aspiring DJ get the stage to such a big festival? What's your advice? Take it slow and believe in yourself and just tell an honest message. Don't try to be anybody else. You know, you have to be yourself. Not, I want to be Ferry Costa or Sasha or Solomon or Ricardo. You have to be you. If you could eternally be stuck in one year music scene, which year would be? One that I wasn't in, so it probably sounds better than I actually make it in my head, which would be when disco was happening in New York. I would actually love to have been there for that. I think it was probably a really special time. Some influences, some disco influences now in 2018. What's your opinion about it? No, I mean, this is, the thing is disco has actually influenced electronic music, house music from the early days, so perfect. I, I, I never tire of disco coming back into the consciousness of people. No, yeah, I'm a, I'm a massive fan. I mean, disco uses a lot of strings. Disco uses high energy bass lines. Disco is beautiful and it's like, funky and it's great to dance to. Sure, it can be cheesy, but you know, it can also be super cool. How much of your time do you invest in your career and do you have any time for your family? I have a beautiful cat. Yeah, she's this ridiculous white fluffy cat that likes talks all the time, you know? If you say, you know, she's just mimicking you. So if I say hello, I get meow, meow, from my cat, which is amazing. And it can never ceases to amaze me. Uh, and I'm just laughing all the time, you know, but like I'm at home with my girlfriend and I, I, you have to step off because this is a fantasy. This isn't real. This happens at certain times of the day at, on certain days. And then it, you know, goes away. But if you like... Uh, Then it's work, you know, then I'm looking for new music, looking for new artists, looking after my label, dealing with my team. Um, but I enjoy that too. Uh, but, but you have to like turn off, turn the phone off, not be available, not be answering emails all times of the day and night because it, 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 cons it consumes you, you know, it eats you up and it's everybody in the world right now. We're all connected with our phones all the time and it's hard to like compartmentalize. You have a cat, but do you cook? Um, I actually do. I love cooking. It's actually another one of my things where I, I like to disconnect and I, uh, for myself and my girlfriend um, and my cat. <laughs> But no, I, I like it. It's, it's this sort of like moment, you know, you get to spend 20 minutes to an hour to two hours, depending on what you're cooking, focused, you know, and creating something. So it's another form of creation. And I, I think, again having time to enjoy cooking and not being under pressure to cook for three kids and you know ah, you know it's it, again i can find the joy in cooking <laughs> <laughs> 